G'day guys, how you doing? This is um, episode three of the South Prado build. I have a little micro doodle now on my shirt, so you should be able to hear what I'm saying better and less angle grinder noises, which some have complained about. So you got to me. Thanks to my little sister, she bought it for Christmas. Um, so we have a lot done now. Um, you'll see in the video, I have my beautiful diff housing here, which I'm actually cutting up again. Um, I didn't make a mention as to why, but I'll get to that at the end. Um, but we have the entire chassis done now. I'll reference it in the video, but she's all painted, ready to go, minus a couple little things. Um, yeah, everything's done, all the hard fabrication work on the front end is done. The engine's over there, ready to get put back in. Um, gonna do a few more things on that, which I have also referenced. Um, but yeah, let's get stuck into it. So the first thing we'll get stuck into on today's episode is the front diff housing. Um, like I mentioned, I've stripped a couple a uh, couple things off it. I'm going to be cutting the radius arm mounts off that I've done already. Um, you see I've cut them off here and cut them off here. I've left the bracing on. So I'll cut to some clips now of me doing the diff bracing. Um, I've done my panard mount all bracing underneath. You can see she's got the nice uh, nice big fillets down underneath the knuckles. Ties into the knuckle balls and down the length of the housing. Done my boxing on top just to help give a bit of strength down the long side and um, tie that into my radius arm mounts. So we'll cut to that now. All right, so I've got the diff bracing all tacked on now and uh, just getting ready to weld it on. So I've tacked both ends. And then what I'll do is I'll weld up my radius arm side first. Weld here. I'm gonna do a few tacks down the length of it. Stitch the middle. Stitch up the side, up the side, obviously. Work my way around, just so I don't warp the housing. So the best way to do it is to tack the ends so that when you weld it, the diff can't get longer or shorter and then start obviously doing stitches in the middle because it's going to shrink the material of the diff housing less here than it would down here where it's skinny so you just want to work your way down both ways um, let the diff cool in between each stitch um, otherwise it's gonna it's gonna bend like a fucking banana and nobody wants that
So now I've got the ends welded to the arms. The front corner's stitched and then a few tucks down the length. So I'll let that cool down for a while. And then I'll go back and I'll start stitching down each of the sections. Just working my way down nice and slow, um, keeping the heat in mind. Righto, so we got the diff back in the car, still braced, having a celebratory beer to end the day, as you, as you should. And now that you've seen that, um, I have actually cut off the radius arm mounts and coilover tabs. I've just thought of a better way of doing it, where the radius arm mount goes more than halfway around the axle tube, just to hold some material strength in there and shape strength instead of just weld. So before, obviously they're sitting on just like this, um, but only halfway to the center line of the, of the diff, and they, can, they could pull off, not that they will, because the weld's pretty strong, but now I've made them go, it's about three quarters of the way around, I'll just get them. So these are my new radius arm mounts I got cut. Ignore this, I was gonna try fit hydro bumps, but I don't know if I mentioned it or not in the video, there's just no room in this chassis with the flip radius arms. So eventually down the road with custom arms, I'll be doing hydro bumps straight to the housing, but that's gonna get lopped off there. You can see the general shape in here goes more than halfway around. Instead of stopping about here, we, we have the extra tail on it. So when this sits around, you can just pop it on. But now you can't actually pull it off because you got the shape trying to hold it on there. So that's gonna be a lot stronger. I've got all them cut and then I've got my coilover tabs that slot into that. So it's like an interlocking structure of four plates. Um, they're like keys into each other and you know, it's gonna be, be fairly strong. So I'm just gonna do that just for an extra bit of strength and safety. Um, other than that, the front housing's pretty much ready to go. I've got all my parts to build it. So the next episode I'll be assembling this, putting it in the car for good um, with an assembled center and the ARV diff locker that I got. In relation to the front housing also, I have a GU panard rod. Thanks, Harrison. My little brother, little Asian brother. Um, gonna use this end here, just cause it's got the spherical joint. This PSR joint I think he had in it is absolute garbage. So I'm gonna get a, a genuine Nissan one. Just cause the angle the panard runs back on, um, I wanna be able to, Want to be able to try alleviate some of the flex in that bush on the chassis end. So with a spherical, it's going to take a lot of that out and just allow it to roll without actually putting strain on the rubber. Um, so I've got that and I've got a brand new VDJ 79 Panard other end at home. So it's going to combine them. I'm obviously going to have to lengthen the bush end on the chassis side just because it's still going to be about 150 mils too short. Um, but the Panard, yeah, I'll get that sorted in the next episode also. Um, I have got a solid tie rod also for 80 series from Roadrunner Off-Road. Um, that'll just be stronger, obviously. And the last thing to sort out is the drag link. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, the exciting thing, like I mentioned, is the engine cage is done. So all my shock hoops, shock brackets, um, all the bracing, everything in the rails, steering box mount, panard mount, it's done. She's all painted now. Um, Greg helped me do that yesterday. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Um,
she's ready to go. So once I put the motor back in, I can start reassembling the front end. I've got to do a few more little brackets here and there for like the steering column. Um, also for some side intrusion plates so you can't see the wheels through the engine bay um, because it's being engineered. Um, so I've done, a, I've done a design that the hoop, it starts at the rear of the firewall um, on the rail comes up to where the, where the coilovers go, instead of coming straight back down where it's going to interfere with the steering column, I've actually sent it forwards over the front of the steering box um, and then I've tied some braces back down to the Panard cross member. So the whole thing sort of is like one solid unit that goes through the whole front section of the rails with some beefy mounts that go to the, top, uh, to the bottoms of the rails where they all meet. Um, I'm actually really happy with this. I've not really seen much in the streetcar sort of thing where they run a design similar to this that just sort of do some shitty ass hoop off the side of the rail and then brace it back with some plate or do some retarded looking little L thing. Um, so now that that's done, I can put that engine back in, put in my new turbo, um, get that on the manifold, get it all sorted, make all my piping, then I can build the crossover brace. So I will have a cross brace going from the tops of the rails, probably do something real wanky with my name, well, I, don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it'll be a cross brace going from the front, um, front and back of both hoop, side to side, just to help take some of that stress out. Not that there's much because of the way that I brace it, but I know, I know the engineer will like to see it. So you see what I mean? All the rails and everything are painted. I had to do a little notch for the coil overs. I'll slap a photo in, but it was very tight with where it sat. Got the pan up mount down there, got all my extra bracing in. You can see the cross member, how it's all tied into to the hoops. So I'm really happy with this. So you can see down there, I have the panard mount and that comes out, try to get it in line with the edge of the edge of the drag link. Um, same notch, because when it's full articulation this way, the coil lever wants to hit and my steering box mounts. So yeah, again, I'm really happy with how that's all coming out. It sort of looks a bit like a race car now, which is sort of the vibe I was going for, more of like a street registered pre-runner half sort of deal. Not a TikTok pre-runner where it's just a GQ with a missing ball bar. And then some P-plater doing the old fucking wah na 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 around a little gravel road and then rolls it in front of his 15-year-old missus. Um, yeah, so I've got the engine ready to go back in. Um, I've also built an A340 with my good friend Nick. He's helped me out heaps on that. I really appreciate it. So he's put a little bit of his secret jizz in there and we did some cool shit. He helped me out um, building a really bulletproof box. Hopefully, even though I, I break everything, so I might break it and he knows that, which is pretty funny. Um, so we're ready to drop that in, just waiting for the torque converter. Um, but other than that, it's fully built, so I'll cut to that video now. I tried to film a little bit, um, just so you guys have a bit of an insight of what it's like to build an auto. I've only done a few, so if it goes bang, it's my fault.
Do it, do it, do it, do it. Just come in looking like that one on the floor over there. <laughs> Alright, so I really appreciate um, you guys watching this episode. Um, I'm really looking forward to the next episode because you'll probably see this thing back on its wheels. Well, you will. I'm not going to drop it without that. Um, at least the front wheels anyway. So everything, just got to finalise painting the wheel arches in the, in the engine bay. Get everything assembled and back in. Um, drop the motor back in, start all my turbo work. And then I can roll it in the shed a bit further and get the four link full link done i've got that all cut out already that's only going to take me a few weeks i'm hoping fingers crossed even though this was only going to take a few weeks but we'll ignore that um yeah so other things to mention is the car is still a piece of shit it's incredibly dirty but i'm looking forward to getting back on the tracks and beating the shit out of it so thank you very much for watching um i hope you guys enjoy the content and thank you for being patient i know it's taken a little while it's a lot of work especially when you're doing everything by yourself and you're out in the shed grinding for hours and hours and hours just doing shit work underneath you and sparks on your face and your other shit in your face, dirt, the rest of it. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.